Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Seven are confirmed dead in a B-17 accident. Strata Launch is working to rebuild. And Embraer Praetor 500 receives EASA and FAA approval. I'm Sophie Herlock. Seven people were killed when a Collings Foundation B-17 went down on Wednesday at Bradley International Airport in Connecticut. The plane went down while trying to make an emergency landing shortly after it took off just before 10 a.m. It then hit a building which contained several tanks of de-icing fluid, and the aircraft was largely consumed by fire. Seven others sustained injuries ranging from minor to critical. One of those injuries was on the ground. A firefighter also sustained minor injuries. An NTSB team later arrived on the scene at about 4 p.m. We are aware that the pilot radioed air traffic control and stated there was an issue with one of the engines. We identified that engine in the wreckage and we secured it for further examination. We were able to determine that the plane made contact with the approach lights at about 1,000 feet from runway 6 or the threshold of runway 6 and had hit in some way uh, about 30 approach lights which are on breakaway poles. Uh, we know that the pilot radioed that there was concern with the airplane and then circled back around to runway six. We know that there was impact about a thousand feet out from the threshold of the runway but that's obviously something we're going to look at as Part of the investigation is, did hitting any of this play a role? Uh, I, we do know that from some of the witness marks and some of the video that, it, that the plane was at one point a bit right wing down. We'll be right back with Around the Patch. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back with all this news coming out of the aviation industry. It's time for today's trip around the patch. Blue Origin plans to conduct at least two more unmanned test flights of its new Shepard rocket system before putting passengers on board. The company filed an application for its next test flight with an operational window beginning in November. This could push a first crewed flight into 2020. However, Blue Origin had originally hoped to fly its first passenger last year. Airbus Perlin Mission 2 has wrapped up its Season 4 flights in Argentina and is now on its way back to the project's home in Minden, Nevada. While a rare stratospheric weather phenomenon kept the glider from reaching world record altitudes this year, Airbus Perlin Mission 2's pilot still completed seven stratospheric flights, reaching 65,000 feet, the third highest glider flight in history. Two employees of Cathay Pacific Group have lost their jobs after they allegedly tampered with the oxygen canister aboard a Cathay Dragon aircraft. The partially discharged canister was discovered on a flight en route to Hong Kong from Kuala Lumpur. Several other instances of tampering with oxygen canisters on Cathay Pacific planes are under investigation. The first Bombardier Global 6500 is now in service. This achievement comes on the heels of Transport Canada certification on both the Global 5500 and Global 6500 awarded on September 24th. The aircraft will make its public debut at the National Business Aviation Convention and Exposition in Las Vegas on October 22nd. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. Today is a new dawn. With a new name. Un nuevo logotipo. 
a new factor und einem globalen Kundenfokus. We are Continental Aerospace Technologies and we stand behind you. After rumors the company was for sale, Stratolaunch, which built the world's largest wingspan airplane designed for launching small satellites into low Earth orbit, looks like it's trying to rebuild. As of this morning, the company has seven job openings posted. The Stratolaunch airplane has flown once, making its maiden flight back on April 13th. Paul Allen, who made billions as a co-founder of Microsoft founded Vulcan, the parent company of Strata Launch in 1986. It was widely rumored Vulcan would sell Strata Launch after Allen's death in October of 2018, and the company went through sharp staff reductions. Last year, Strata Launch said it hoped to have the massive airplane certified for air launch operations after about two years of flight testing. While that timetable may no longer be viable, there does seem to be some indication that the company remains viable, as Vulcan has maintained all along long. Embraer's new Praetor 500 mid-sized business jet has been granted its type certificate by EASA and the FAA. The Praetor 500 also received regulatory approval from Brazil's Civil Aviation Authority in August, less than a year after having been announced in October of 2018 at NBAA base. The Praetor 500 achieves an intercontinental range of 3,340 nautical miles, a high-speed cruise of 466 knots true airspeed, a full fuel payload of 1,600 pounds, a takeoff distance of 4,222 feet, and an unfactored landing distance of 2,086 feet. The Praetor 500 is the only mid-sized jet with full fly-by-wire control systems. The Praetor 500 features the newest edition of Collins Aerospace ProLine Fusion Flight Deck. Some of the options available on the Praetor 500 flight deck are the industry-first vertical weather display air traffic control-like situational awareness with ADSB in predictive wind shear radar capability as well as the Embraer Enhanced Vision System with a heads-up display and an enhanced vision system, an internal reference system, and a synthetic vision guidance system. And that wraps up this week's everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in and don't forget to subscribe and to check us out on Twitter and on Facebook. To stay up to date on the latest aviation and aerospace news this weekend, just head over to aero-news.net. I'll see you Monday.